Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? I'm going to check one thing. So hang in there. Uh, make sure you say hi. Let's see. Hi, Glenn in New Mexico from Balloon City. Hello, uh, Phil. Good evening, Amy and Grandma Ping and Sue. Hello, Joanna. Hi, Gracie. Guys, I got to check one thing. This latest update with the latest iPhone or iPad, whatever this iOS update is, has just wreaked havoc on the way that our stuff comes through. I've been having problems with things all day. I'm not getting messages um, and all this. So anyways, hi, Gina. Hello, Jennifer. I'm so glad to see you on. I hope everything is well, Jennifer and Carpinteria. So I'm just looking for one quick thing. I'm going to try to see if my phone will give me our comments any better. It doesn't, it hasn't been, but we will try. Um, I just think I put the mystery Monday, um, uh, countdown up instead of the Dipsy Tuesday. I think I just realized that. So let me just, God, I hope I'm in the right group. Yeah, I'm in the Tipsy Tuesday group. So, um, let me see if I can find today's, anyways, if I miss your comments tonight, I'm sorry. They sometimes are up. Sometimes they are not. It has been the bane of my existence. Um, I think I know part of the reason one of the, the, uh, camera phones that we're using is, um, no, no longer updatable. So I think somewhere it's causing me an issue. So welcome. I think fall is actually really here. Um, we had an event this weekend, um, and I decided that, um, the weather wanted to have one last hot weekend because they knew, uh, the two hottest days were the day we were unloading and the day we were loading at the end. So anyways, um, once again, if I don't see your comments, I'm sorry. It's, um, haven't seen one here in a while. So I don't actually know who is truly on tonight. Um, but I will do my best. I will go back and read them at the end. If there's any questions that I need to answer, um, for some reason, I can't even get them to pull up, um, right now on my, um, phone. So I was hoping to maybe do it in a um, different little area, but it's just not working. So we're going to go on. We're going to talk about pillowcases today. Um, and Marissa and I were talking um, today and we we're back and forth. We have some things in the works for you guys, some little holiday things and some stuff like that. So we have other things coming for you, but we decided with all of the new people um, that we have, it's always good to revisit um, pillowcases. Um, we have put the pattern online for you guys. So let me show you really quickly where you guys will find that. Now that is going to show up, um, somewhere between six 30 and seven on this page. It's already in and it's already scheduled to post. I just don't remember what time I set it for. So the, the pattern, um, for the pillowcase is going to be something that you can go into the files. And I'm going to show you guys right now how you can get those. Also tonight, we're actually going to, I'm going to show you some options. Um, we're going to review the traditional way to make one. And then I'm going to show you a couple of options, um, with the flange that you can do. And then we'll talk about some other embellishments. So let's take a quick look over here. When you go to the um tipsy tuesday facebook page which i have right here right here there is a, a icon that is called uh files okay when you click on files all of these are patterns that we've put in here so there's a zipper pouch pattern that's free there's a uh t-shirt quilt worksheet there's a cathedral window pin cushion um, let's see, we have a reversible, reversible, uh, runner. Um, we've got a boxy tote. We've got a keychain, a Christmas tree ornament, a gift card pattern, a whirly bag pattern, a binder cover, flying geese. And then later today, you guys are going to see in there the, um, you guys will see in there your, um, um, the pattern for the pillowcases. So that's where you guys will find that. 
I did skip over, so let's go into our drink of the evening. Thank you, Linda Sue, for testing it out for us. Um, it is the Hocus Pocus. Um, pineapple juice, orange juice, a little bit of rum. Now, uh, Linda Sue changed hers out for coconut rum. She said was fantastic. Um, some apple brandy and um, some blue uh, carousel. There is your um, instructions. And, um, oh, I think I finally got you guys on there. Um, okay, so I might now have some comments because, hello, Susan. Um, so Susan up in Oregon. And then I am going to have, uh, let's see, hello, Carla in Oregon. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Joanna. Um, so uh, my entry this morning today did say Mystery Monday. So sorry about that. It really is Tipsy Tuesday, but we are in the right group. So I may have some comments. I may not. There were a couple more comments since I was on there last. So we'll go from there. Traditional pillowcase um, is three quarters of a yard of a focus fabric. Um, a, an eighth of a yard for your accent piece and a quarter yard for your trim. The reason it is an accent piece at a quarter of a yard or an eighth of a yard is you can't go into a quote shop and buy uh, two and a half inches, um, which is what we trim this down to. So we trim these to the cuff is going to be nine inches. The um, flange or the accent is a two and a half inch strip. And then you're going to have a 27 inch piece, which is going to be the um, body of the pillowcase. I am going to do a little thing about embellishing the cuff with Mystery Monday. It won't be our whole focus for our next Mystery Monday, but I am going to sh talk to you guys about adding names and embroidery designs, where you should put them and how you should line them up. So watch for that on the Mystery Monday. Um, next time, we're going to show it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we sew these with a French seam. So I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to work on a smaller version of a pillowcase. And don't judge me for my fabric choices. I literally grab some scraps and just cut them up. We're going to make our traditional flange. I'm going to show you how to do a hidden seam to stitch this flange down so that it stays down. Of course, you could always top stitch it in place, but I'm going to show you a different way. Then I'm going to show you how to change out the flange for rickrack and how to sew that in. So we're going to be going back and forth between um, the machine um, and here uh, throughout um, the demo tonight. So we're going to start with... Um, we're going to start, I'm just grabbing this iron here. We're going to start and we'll talk about the cuff, or excuse me, the accent piece first. So on the accent piece, now mind you, I'm working with a smaller size. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take your accent piece and we're going to fold it in half, uh, wrong sides together. All right. So we will uh, sew that together or press that together, wrong sides together. Okay. Um, we're going to make a quick pillowcase. Once again, I'm going to do a smaller version of this. Those of you joining in late, we're doing some pillowcase demos tonight with a couple different ways. I may or may not know that you're on. We're having some comment issues, but we'll go from there. So. I have taken this lovely piece of scrap here. And then once again, I am um, going to I have to see which way I turned this. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, our fabric. So this is going to be my accent. This is going to be the main. And this is going to be the um, cuff. Now, what we've done with this is I shortened it because I want to sew the whole thing. When I show you the other options for these accents, I'm actually just going to sew the first step. So what we'll do is we will start here with our cuff piece right side up. And then we are going to take our body. So the body of our pillowcase is going to go um, right side up and it's going to stack up. I always will kind of roll this out of my way 
and I'm going to line up these edges, so my raw edges. Then the piece that we just pressed here, we're going to go ahead and go here. Now I'm going to just, I was just cutting half widths of fabric. So we've taken that. Now the raw edges of what we pressed, these are all going to go together. Now some people will go ahead and and baste that to hold it and I it's not something that I ever do and then we're going to roll up the center of this pillowcase making sure that we don't get it up here in our seam and then we are going to go here and we're going to bring that cuff fabric up and around so we're going to do it now you can use um straight pins I like to use um wonder clips in stuff like this because they're just quick and easy we're going to go ahead and, and pin this. Now, if you have a serger and you want to just really make quick work of pillowcases, these are such great gifts. My son has, and my son, my nieces and nephews, they've, everybody's got more pillowcases probably than we'll ever use, but they still love them. I was chatting with Patsy earlier today and she was saying about maybe no more pillowcases for the grandkids. One of them had said, that they think they have enough. And I said, well, you just wait until she doesn't get a pillowcase and then she's gonna be sad. So um, if you have a serger, obviously you can serge really quickly and you wouldn't need to do the French seam, but the French seam, um, for those of you that have never done one, um, are so easy. So as a reminder, it was the cuff fabric right side up. Then we laid the body of the pillowcase, the main, right side up, lining up that top edge. And then we laid our folded, um, accent piece with the raw edges all facing up. So we're going to go to the machine and we are going to grab and we're just going to sew a quick uh, quarter inch seam here. Make sure my camera angle should be good for you guys. I've really been working on a new camera angle. Um, and I think I finally have figured it out where I don't bump the camera when I sew. So what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and sew a quick quarter of an inch seam. All right, so quick quarter inch seam. All right, so now back here, um, we've got our quarter inch seam sewn and this has now been um, what we like to call hot dog or pillow cased in. We're gonna go ahead and pull all of those centers out, okay? So when we pull the center out, we will end up with a cuff, an accent piece and the body of our pillowcase. And then what you'll see here is that this cuff is going to be fully encased. So when we do our French seam um, on the side and bottom, and then you get here, everything is fully encased in here. So we will grab our pressing board. Okay. And then what I like to do here is I like to go ahead and just press right along this seam first. And then I will turn it over before I press out here. Then I'm going to go ahead and press and make sure that this seam is there and nice and exactly how I want it. Then I'll go ahead and press out the rest of the cuff so that I have that nice crisp uh, seam, okay? So what we'll do, is, and you'll see there, so we have our nice crisp seam across the top. Everything is nice and pressed. There's our flange. So let me go ahead and take this off here. I'm going to cheat here for a second, just for the sake of time, because I've got to do uh, two more demos with you on this. I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to shorten this. Okay. 
So let me just shorten that off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this pillowcase and we're going to fold it so that it is wrong sides together. Okay. What I like to do, so wrong sides together first, and I know that seems crazy, but it is what we're doing. We're going to come here and I like to take and make sure that my cuff and my flange are right there. They're, they're lined up exactly where I want them, okay? So that they are nice and straight. And then I will come back in here. From there, I will go ahead and use some wonder clips, okay? And I'm just gonna put a couple of uh, wonder clips in. I was doing this really fast. So I'm just going to quickly clean up the bottom of this. All right. Just wanted to quickly clean that up. So we're going to go ahead and sew. So we did wrong sides together. So we're facing it. We're going to head back over here to the machine. So we're back here at the machine and we're going to go ahead. Sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam again. And then we're going to sew here across the bottom. So we are going to sew the side and the bottom because this side here is already folded. Okay. Those of you that are joining late, I'm having some problems seeing the comments. So I'll check in on you guys later. Um, but. Um, so I'll check in a little bit later if there's any questions. So if you've joined late, I can't see your names right now. Um, so we will, uh, I will check on there, but I'm glad that you are here. So now that we've done this, we're going to go ahead and turn our pillowcase inside out. All right. So we're going to press, uh, turn our pillowcase inside out, making sure that our corners here are all uh, popped out. And then we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to sew again. And you'll see that my cuff, everything lined up here um, because I did put the pin. I'm trying to get that. So you can see that the cuff lined up. So exactly there how I wanted it. So you can go here and press. I just kind of finger press this one. If you guys are doing these in bulk, you would do all of these steps and just chain piece, chain piece, chain piece. So now we're going to go back to make our French seam. Now we've done a quarter inch seam on here. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a three eighths inch seam so that that is completely encased. So back over to the machine, I'm going to take my quarter inch foot off. I'm going to put my quarter inch foot off. And so you will check your seam allowance. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew a 3 8 inch seam. Now remember, I just did this small uh, just for the time saving. All right, and then we're going to go across that very last seam across the bottom, and we're going to French seam the bottom seam here.
I'm going to actually probably show it right here on this camera. So remember, this seam is completely done. Now we have French seamed in our quarter inch seam. So I'm going to turn this pillowcase back out the right way. All right. So turning this pillowcase back out the right way, you'll see everything lines up here. I just need to give this a press. So you'll see that my flange lines up and you'll see that my uh, flange and cuff line up. So just take the time and check your pinning there. Um, and so there you have your finished pillowcase on the outside. And then on the inside, it has a French seam on it. So it is completely encased on the inside. So it has that very nice uh, fit and finish. Um, the fit and finish um, having it done. Now, is it a necessary step? No, but you are going to end up with some raveling and some things like that. So if you have a serger and you just want to knock them out, you can serge them. But as you can see, even if I was doing a full size one, it's, it's a seam to add the three pieces together. So it's one seam there, a seam, so two seams to sew it together and two seams to French seam it. So a pillowcase is five seams. So making it and French seaming it really isn't that big of a deal. So there's the miniature version, just once again for time. Okay. Um, and of course, I'm not going to win any fabric choices here. So let me throw that up there, any fabric uh, choice awards there. But once again, it was um, just grabbed um, some stuff out of the scrap bucket. So, um, oh, I, I, let's, okay, let's see. I see Amy from Florida. I see Alice on. I see Paula on. And then I see, um, did I say Amy in Florida? Anyways, okay. So let's talk about, um, so let's talk about the, um, um, let's talk about some of our options. Okay, so. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm only gonna sew part of it. So we're not gonna sew the pillowcase together, but we're gonna make this first seam. But before we do it, we're gonna talk about this flange. So this flange um, gives it some fun, gives it some character. But sometimes people complain because once we wash it, it goes up and it's kind of funny and things like that. Um, and so they don't always iron well. So let me show you a way that you can do it. Now I've already pressed all of these. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do this. We are going to take our fabric here, okay, just like we did um, earlier, except we're going to leave our cuff off for a minute. And once again, I'm just going to cut this here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we're going to give this either a couple of wonder clips, a couple of straight pins, but we're going to line up only one of the raw edges, okay? So we're gonna do one of the raw edges, just like this. Now we're sewing the accent piece to the cuff. Now in the previous, way I showed you. We did it like this and we did it all in one seam. What we're going to do here is we're going to do just the bottom one. So this is the wrong side. We're going to go over to the machine. We're going to go right over to the machine and we're going to sew right down the, the, um, crease that we pressed. So we're going to go just like this and we're going to sew right along that crease. Okay, so right along the crease. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to just take that and fold it right back. So I'm going to go over, we'll go back to the table. And we're going to stack this the exact same way that we previously did. So we're going to lay down our cuff fabric, which is going to be right side up. We would have laid down our main fabric, and then we would have laid down our uh, pressed cuff. But what you're going to see here, and you can go ahead and press it, is now this is attached. So you still get the look of the accent piece without it flapping so when you do press these there are do you do wash these they are going to come out of the uh dryer and that part is not going to uh flip around so we'll then do the exact same thing and we're going to come right up here we'll line up those edges we're going to roll this Okay, we're going to roll it, leaving it in the middle. We're going to bring the cuff to the, I always start in the center when I'm rolling up that cuff. And we'll do the same thing. A couple of, so a couple wonder clips. We're going to head right to the machine. So we'll go right there, to, right back to the machine. And we're going to proceed exactly how we did. So this ju is just going to have one additional seam. And that's because it was that first tack down of the flange to the body of the pillowcase. Now in the pattern, um, once again, that'll be found in the files section. I'll review that before we get to the end. Um, it will give you, if you are using a directional fabric, it's going to give you those instructions. So now when we come here and we go ahead and pull uh, the center of the pillowcase out of the cuff, you're going to see that we end up with the exact same look as we do here. So the exact same look as we have here. The difference is this flange is free. This flange is sewn down. Okay. So that is, um, <laughs> hello sloths. So that is going to be, um, your option. So this is, floppy this is sewn down you get the everything is the same except we add that into the beginning so you guys can refer back to that okay i'm not going to sew this pillowcase um the sides or do the french seam all right so there is um the original way here's the same way that sewn down has will always have a nice finished after being laundered and now we're going to talk about doing one of these with uh, and embellishing it with our using rickrack in place of the um, um, rickrack in place of the flange. Okay, so let me just once again square that up really quick because I grab scraps. Um, and then, okay, so we're going to take rickrack and you're going to need jumbo rickrack. All right. Uh, in order for this to work. Now, you could probably use um, a non-jumbo rickrack or um, if you wanted to put it on top, but if you're, it, it's really not going to show if you use regular rickrack. So there's a couple things. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I want you guys to see the lining up. All right. So I've taken this rickrack, and as you know, on rickrack, we have hills and valleys. All right. Now we have to take into account a quarter of an inch seam. So number one, we got to take into account a quarter of an inch seam. Um, and we don't want any of these valleys to be showing up here. It just would not look right. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to place this, and I'm going to start right here. And I like to place this about an eighth of an inch, just like that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple of clips here. So an eighth of an inch, once again, you could use pins, um, whatever you want to do. Okay. So you're going to want to pin this or clip whatever you want to do before you um, before you fold your cuff up. All right. So we're still layering it exactly the same way. Cuff face up. Body of the pillowcase face up. And then um, the rickrack will be face up. So you'll see here that I left, an, I eyeballed about an eighth of an inch, okay, right there. So now I'm going to go ahead. There is my center. So I'm going to roll that up. So there's that center. Then I'm going to go back up here with that cuff. And I'm going to line up the raw edges you so I can see the raw edge there. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up. And then there's that pin I showed you. So there's that. And then there is that. Now, if you feel more comfortable, you can lay that down and then get kind of use a baste, uh, like an eighth inch basting stitch just to hold that rickrack in place. So now when we go to the machine, we're going to do our quarter of an inch. But I'm going to use my regular sewing foot and just adjust my needle over to that quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, or I can even do one needle position bigger if I want. So now when I come in here, and I didn't want the guide of my foot to cause me a problem, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to sew my quarter of an inch. Now, by sewing the quarter of an inch, I've gone past that eighth inch mark. So I've gone past the eighth inch mark that was right here. So this eighth inch that of my this valley um, is going to be within my quarter of an inch. So it's not going to be seen. All right, so there we go. All right. I always, I forgot to trim that rickrack off. So now before I turn this, so before we turn this, I'm going to go ahead and trim off my ends of my rickrack here. And then I'm going to go ahead and come right in here on my seam allowance, or right along my edge, my raw edges, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim away those, that excess rickrack, okay? So I'm gonna trim that away. Then I will do the exact same thing. I'm gonna pull that center through. And now I have my third option, which would be to use rickrack as my piece. I have no valley showing. It is a very consistent seam there uh, throughout the entire thing. Of course, I would press that. And then there's another way to um, have uh, an embellishment other than the flange. So now we have our 
original with the, um, we're going to call it the floppy flange. And then we have the version where we've sewn the flange down inside and hidden. Okay. So if you remember, we opened up this piece, lined up one raw edge, we sewed in the crease, and then folded this back so there's no seam. Now you could, once you sewed it this way, you could just go in and top stitch it. But this gives it, um, it's all done without having that extra stitch showing. Um, you know, I top stitch a lot of things, but that is another option. So regular pillowcase floppy flange, pillowcase sewn down flange, and then pillowcase using Rick Rack in place of the fabric flange to give that a whole, um, a whole nother look. So there you go. So once again, there is the pillowcase done. That was the quarter inch, two and a half inches, so nine inches, uh, two and a half inches, and then 27 inches, all by with the fabric. Now, um, we had some people join in late. Once again, I'm having some problems with comments, so I don't necessarily know that everybody is here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go back over here. In our Tipsy Tuesday Facebook group, across the top, Across the top, there is something, when you go there, there's, it says discussion. Let me actually just go back just like this real quick. Okay, so this is what it looks like, right? Our normal page, there is all of our stuff, okay? So right here, discussion, featured rooms, members, media, and then files. It's going to go on sometime between 6.30 and, 6, uh, and 7 o'clock tonight. All of these are free PDFs that you can print. So if you want to print out our gift card holder from last time, you would just click on it and click right here where it says. It'll put it right in your downloads, and then there you can print it right out. So the pillowcase will go in. We've already set it up and scheduled it. I just don't remember what time. Between 6.30 and 7, it will be on there. If you joined us late in our cocktail tonight, was the Hocus Pocus, pineapple juice, orange juice, gold rum. Now my official taste tester used coconut rum and loved it. Uh, apple brandy and uh, some blue Caraco. There is your cocktail. And so with that, cheers to Tipsy Tuesday. You want to know what's crazy? I was looking and there are only five more Tipsy Tuesdays in this year. I just absolutely shocking to me. So just five more, one more this month, two next month, and then two in December. Um, so it is a little bit crazy. Amy just texted me and said that Carol um, won first place for her Dresden um, flower uh, and best of show at the Fresno Fair. So how fun is that? So that was one of our classes we did um, in our boxes. I'm really excited. So congratulations, Cheryl. I mean, uh, Carol, sorry about that. Um, we will, I'm going to go back and read all of these comments. Once again, they're not all coming up here, um, on my phone, uh, or on the iPad. So like I said, I hate these iOSs. I've had problems with text messages all day. Um, cheers to tipsy Tuesday. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Um, if you've never made a pillowcase, um, or if you need a refresher, um, if you weren't sure on how to do the French seam, and then there are your options for the flange. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see you um, in two weeks for our next Tipsy Tuesday, and I'm sure I'll see you somewhere um, online uh, in between. I know not this week and next week in this breakfast club, and we've got some other fun stuff planned. So thank you for joining us. Have a great evening, everybody, and we will see you soon.